All right. Good Monday. Did you hit it, Cindy? That was really weird. <laughs> okay, I hit it. Good Monday morning. If you are uh, watching this on replay, we do these on Monday mornings and you can join us live and be a part of the crew here. And today that we are going to actually have two people in a hot seat. We've been talking about superpowers for almost a month now, and I am dead set on getting this skill set down pat. And if you have not created uh, create is not the right word. If you have not filled out the super find your, finding your superpowers form, I highly recommend that you do it. It will at least get your brain to start thinking about the things that we really want to focus on with building our business in 2023. And just as a little side note, a little shameless plug, Sid and I are creating something really cool for 2023 for all of the people who follow us and want to participate and create some really great, I, 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 you, it would encompass a lot of things, habits, um, skill sets, but we're going to do these 21 day challenges. Uh, there's lots of information out there about how long it takes to create a new habit or a new system or something new that you do every single day. Um, one of the shortest time frames is 21 days. So we're going to, we're going to run with that. Um, and 21 days out of every month, we are going to have a different challenge for you guys to participate in. And there will be a cost to it. We're doing $21 for 21 days. It's a dollar a day. It's just to cover costs on our end for different systems and programs and things that we're going to be putting into it. Um, we invite all of you guys. There will be a sales page up and running soon. Uh, we already have January and February mostly mapped out. It is going to be super fun. I, we will give you guys a little bit of a heads up of like what things are coming in which months, at least the first few months as we kind of start mapping some things out. But I'm going to tell you this right now. If you are gosh darn serious about exploding your business in 2023, you will want to participate in January's 21 days because it is going to set up every single piece in your business as building blocks for the rest of the year. It's going to give you all of the uh, all of the systems, all of the tools, all of the framework is probably the best word, all of the framework so that you can set up the very best 2023 and you can crush your business. Then Sydney's going to swoop in in February and let's we're going to start talking TikTok. We're going to get everybody really good at creating new habits on TikTok. And then March will probably go into something like a 21 day live challenge, but there's going to be a new set of 21 days every single month. And we are so excited to roll this out. You guys were even, we've even created all of this in an app that you will be able to download and you will be able to communicate with each other in that app. You will be able to check off all of the things that you do and turn your homework in every day on the app. We're having this specifically built just for our group of people that want to run with us in 2023 and participate in these, okay? They're gonna be fun. There's gonna be homework. There's gonna be things for you to do. There's gonna be ways to keep you on track and in this community of people who are doing the same things that you are doing so that every day as you're building your business online, on foot, on social media, belly to belly, whatever it is, you have a very particular purposeful plan to go out there and smash it in 2023. Along with that, you're going to learn some new skill sets and create some new habits so that you can pour into your business and know that you're doing it in a, um, I don't know if methodical is the right word, but um, um, you know, very pointed. You'll know that you're putting in income producing activities and things that will build your business because we're going to take you with us on that journey so that at the end of the year, you have actually accomplished more goals and you weren't just Zoom zombies that showed up and kind of sort of listened to what we were doing and kind of sort of started to implement things. We're actually going to put you into challenges and give you homework and days to complete that homework and to turn it in and to communicate with each other on how all of that's coming along so that you have accountability partners in all the things that you're going to be doing. I am so excited for what we're going to do. Um, 
we'll we'll continue to pour out some more details over the next what do we have 12 days left of this month 11 days something like that um and then january 1 we will start that first one so i we will get you links and pages and all the stuff that describes the first month um in a way for you to get signed up and download the app and all of those things okay yes where did december go where is my seven minutes gone i have just talked about stuff i wasn't even supposed to be talking about okay i'm going to start with mary Mary, if you are ready, you can unmute. Um, we've been talking about uh, finding our superpowers because I really knew that this was the one piece I felt like people really needed to dig into before we could get started with 2023, because I think we've been running around a little aimlessly, uh, vomiting about our product services and opportunities, spamming people, messaging, and, and not, it not actually taking hold and getting us to where we wanna go. And I want to help people create their, their brand. I want to help people create um, their system, their business, their purpose, their passion, so that when you go out and build any type of business, you decide that you want to um, you know, take on another product line or switch companies or whatever it is that you're doing. I want, I want you to be able to brand yourself and talk about yourself and insert the products because people buy you before they buy your product services or opportunities. I'm excited that Mary is one taking the hot seat because I have worked with Mary for, oh gosh, like 10 years now. Okay, but I have to tell you guys a really great story. I'm going to squirrel for just one second. I pulled up Mary's um, uh, Finding Your Superpowers form just so I could take a peek at some of the answers just before we got started. And I've never done this with Mary. As long as I've worked with her for 10 years in different network marketing businesses, Mary's been a staple in our businesses. She's I will call her the house mom. She does all the traveling. She will go to all events. She will help set up anything. She will be at everything. She will be the person who, if you need a roommate on a trip, if you need a flying buddy, if you need, Mary is always there. I know a lot of things about Mary, but I want to help Mary take her business and explode it in 2023. There's, there's no more dragging our feet and not figuring this out. We're going to figure it out. And you guys get to be a part of that this morning. But as I was reading through her sheet, she said, where is it at? Um, oh, what makes you weird? What makes you different or weird? <laughs> and she put, I'm not sure. So I wanted to pick that for you this morning, Mary. She raised my pet pig before she even knew me. Okay. So this is how mine and Mary's story goes. We met maybe about 10 years ago. I um, opened a health and wellness spa with my father, who's a chiropractor, um, it, near where Mary lives. And she became one of our very first clients in that spot. That is how I met Mary. She ended up doing a lot of different treatments that we had there and loved coming in. We loved her as a client. She was just a breath of fresh air, always happy, always fun to see her and have a, have a chat with her. And Mary and I became friends through that and ended up doing a network marketing business together. Um, and Mary would go travel with me out to Utah. We would go do doctor's conventions together. She would be at all the meetings and we just formed a friendship. And so when I went to take a journey onto my second network marketing company, of course, Mary was one of the very first people I wanted to sit down and have lunch with. And as the story goes, we've built an amazing friendship, business partnership, and all of the things. And, um, but if you, if you, so as, as we unfold our friendship, we learn that we were twins switched at birth. No, just kidding. But something similar. We, when, when I was about 19 or 20 years old, somewhere right around there, my mom and my stepfather decided that they were retiring and they were getting a fifth wheel, um, attaching it to their truck and they were going to travel the country. P.S. I am 45. They are still doing that to this day. Um, if any of you know me, they come and they stay here all summer, which I don't know if that was part of their evil plan back when I was 19 or 20, but it seems to be working out pretty well for them. Um, but when they did that, we had a pet pig that we, uh, my mom wanted a little pot belly pig when, I don't know, sometime when I was a teenager before high school, she wanted a pot belly pig. My stepfather, if you know him, it, it, it he's going to make sure he makes happen, whatever it is that you're wanting to happen, but it may not turn out exactly like you had pictured in your head. And this is one of the prime examples of that happening to my mother as we were growing up. 
she wanted a pot belly pig. It was all the rage. She's not a person that dives into things like that, but she just really wanted one. And so my stepdad was going to make that happen. So he went and got her a baby pig. Okay. But it wasn't a pot belly pig. So it only fit in our house for, I don't know, a few months before it was too big to fit through the door anymore. And it really needed to live outside. We did have a horse and we had chickens and we had like this mini farm in the middle of Clarkston. Um, and so now we had a pig and we named that pig, sweetie, the swine. Over the course of my high school years, you can ask any of my high school friends, we used to skip class, especially if my parents were out of town, and go and ride Sweetie the Swine, and we made just this big, like, joke about it. Like, no one had a thousand-pound pig in their backyard besides Jessica, okay? So we would go and ride Sweetie the, Sweetie the Swine, and um, everyone loved our pet pig. So fast forward to my parents getting ready to, like, sell the house and get a fifth wheel and go on the road. And we didn't know what we were going to do with the pig. So they started trying to find someone to take the pig, but we did not like, it was a thousand pound pig. It was way overweight. There was no, you couldn't slaughter it at, at that point. It was, we wouldn't have wanted that to happen anyways. At that point it was our, it was our pet pig, but there was nothing that you could really do with the pig besides have it as a pet. So who was going to want this thousand pound pig just rolling around that was of no use to anyone. It wasn't their pet. It made it on the news and it made it in the newspaper and it was all over the place. And I'm not sure if that's how Mary found us, but Mary ended up with our pet pig. I never met Mary. That was when I was 19 or 20. And I didn't meet Mary until I was about 35, 34, 35. So this, when we figure this out, after we become friends later in life, that Mary is the one that adopted our sweetie, the swine pet pig, and then, then continued to take care of it and love on it and have it just as a pet out on their semi-farm, right? Do you think yeah. that Mary and I were met, were meant to be friends? Like how crazy is that story that we should have met when I was 19 or 20 all over Sweetie the Swine and who, this is what makes you different and weird, Mary, who adopts a thousand pound pet pig just for the fun of it? <laughs> Only Mary. Didn't you just recently like adopt a donkey or something? Mule, yes. A mule. He was severely abused. Yeah, a mini mule. He's little. <laughs> do you know how many stories and lives you could do about the crazy, weird animals and things that you do? And one of the things she says on here, she could probably do if she could all she would always dream about as a child, and she never actually became was a vet. But you did work in a veterinary clinic for a long time, right? And things like that. I did. Yeah. So that's we're exactly right. When we're talking about our superpowers and our passions and the things that make us different, those are the things that you want to tap into because those are like stories that you could tell on lives day after day. And people would never get tired of hearing of those things. It's what makes you stand out as a person. And that's what we need to do more of is help Mary stand out and create some of the things or not create, but tap into some of the things that make you special and unique, the people, things that people are going to follow you for and want to know more about you. So let's go through just a couple of things on your um, list. And I'm going to have you tell me, I'm going to first have you tell me five people that you're kind of following. The, uh, and I asked this question the other day of Jill, and then I learned something when Jill gave her answer. And I'll go over that in just a second. Um, but five people, uh, give me three people, three people that you're following. You would like to, in 2023, kind of follow them more and make and, and help yourself become more like them or more like what they do. Not necessarily Mary's her own person, but five people you're kind of following because you would like to go down that path. Okay, I'll put you and Sid together, always with you, following you. Um, Danelle, I follow her. And shoot, I don't know. Ro I, I love Rob Sperry or Eric Worre, too. I follow both of them. Very good. Very good. I love myself some Rob. He's amazing. He actually just sent me his new book to read. Did he? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he just released, I, I thought I had it sitting right here, but I think I took it out to the couch to start reading it this weekend. The secrets of a super recruiter or some, right. something like yeah. that. Right. Yeah. I, I got he it is. on Audible. He sent the thing to get it on Audible and I did. Yeah. Outstanding. 
So when Jill answered this question today, I'll just touch on this really quick. She had listed off some people like Tony Robbins and um, Gary V and some people of that stature, right? And I never want somebody to shoot low, right? I always want people to like shoot high, but I also know that in 2023, 2024, 2025, the chances of becoming a Tony Robbins or a Gary V are going to be hard. Are they people you should follow? Absolutely. But I also want people to mix in some people that their ability to get to that level is within reach in the next year to three years. I want you to start following some of the characteristics of what people do. Like Tony Robbins, Gary Vee, they fly around on their private jets. They've got such a huge following. Would we like to get there? Yes, I'm not saying don't follow them. I am saying grab some people that are very similar to the path you were trying to head down now. And I know after working with Jill, we kind of really honed in on what Jill can do in this next year to build her brand. And I'm kind of excited to be on that journey with her. So actually this reminds me, Jill and Mary, please do not let me forget. I want to invite you to do something with me in 2023. That is kind of a big commitment, but I think it would be really good for both of you. So remind me after this to share that with you. Um, because I think both of you can maybe uh, become accountability partners in this next year, because I do think that you guys have a lot of similarities in what you are going to try to do. We haven't gone through Mary's stuff yet. I just know her very well, but I do want you guys to pick some people. I have my, and Kelly Bollinger, when she, Bollinger, when she can't, I have to do that on purpose. Um, when she came over last time uh, for Friendsgiving, she's like, I need to see, you always talk about the people that you have that you kind of like want to follow, um, that you have it posted up behind your desk on like a mini vision board. And I'm like, I don't lie. You can go in my office. It's up there. So she's like, I gotta go see who's on it. <laughs> so they all came in here and we're looking. And so they can tell you that it is the honest God truth. They just sit up right up here. Um, people that I want to follow. I want you guys to do the same thing. And I, even when we're working on some vision board stuff that we'll do in January, I even want you guys to print pictures of those people out and put them in a visual space because you will follow them more if you have them in the front, forefront of your mind. And I do want you to pick some people that are the road, the path that you are currently going down and trying to achieve. So we can up level as we go, but I just don't want you to have some people out. The only people out there that you're following are so far beyond your grasp that it's nobody who can follow their day to day and emulate those things. I hope that makes sense. Um, OK, Mary, next. Um, uh, I put an infinite list of things that you do well, but just give me a few, a few things that come naturally to you that you do well. Well, I think I cook well. I've been cooking since I was in second grade, actually. My dad worked a swing shift and my mom didn't get home from work till late. So I literally was fixing dinner when I was in second grade. Um, Today, that's called problems. child abuse. Yes, I know now it is, but it was <laughs> fine back then. <laughs> that's how I grew up. It's very similar, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, then um, I... I sew well, and that comes naturally too. I don't, I've always wondered about that. I sit down and if there's a complicated thing or to repair something, I just know how to do it. And I, to me, that's, I've always wondered at that. How do I know that? My brain just knows how to do that. So, um, and I guess I uh, love my family and my friends, because my friends are my family. And um, I don't know, I don't know what else. <laughs> I hear you say, you put that you um, are, you so well. Yes. Okay. That's why I said sewing and oh, repairing stuff. I didn't hear you, stuff. sorry. Yeah, things that I'm come sorry. naturally. Yeah, that's what I said. I sew well, and it just comes naturally. I don't, I've always wondered at that. I mean, I made my wedding dress. That's how long I've been sewing, so. Um, I uh, just look at something and can figure out how to do it without any issues. So very good. And those are the things that we want to focus on. So as we start to build out Mary's brand and her purpose and her passion for 2023, you want to put some things in there that you're naturally good at so that when you go to pull from uh, let's just use topics to go live about, or let's say you start a group and you're going to start attracting some people into your group 
the things that are going to be, we don't want to reinvent the wheel and try to make ourselves something that we aren't. And I see that all too much. I've been, I've made that same mistake myself. We want to go out there and create this brand and we start picking things that we really want to be like and things that we want to be really good at, but we haven't accomplished any of it yet. So how in the world do we go out there and actually teach and show and showcase things about ourselves that we really don't have a whole lot of experience doing yet? So we want to incorporate some things that we already do well. And so I want, I want, I'm going to challenge you to keep going with that infinite list of things you do well. I know uh, Mary likes to pick on herself and talk about things that she doesn't do well. And so we're going to work on making a list of 99 things that Mary does wonderfully and, and do the opposite. Okay. All right. Um, I loved this one on yours. Uh, what are your proudest accomplishments? Give me like three. I don't know. I think, well, I'm not sure what I put on there. Number one that I'm really proud of, and I've shared at one mastermind that I was chosen as a speaker for local governments and went, flew to Washington and felt, spoke before um, a subcommittee of the, of the Senate about the way the EPA apportioned um, the cleanup costs for Superfund sites. And I was the local person that got to speak and I, I actually loved it. And we got to, the EPA to change the way they apportioned that cost. Uh, number two. That's, that's pretty, again, that's a cold hold. That's a pretty big deal, Mary Clark. And I don't think anyone knows that about you. Not many. You're, you're right. They don't. I um, Yep. I flew to Washington and I don't know, there's probably 30 to 40 senators in the room, U.S. senators and spoke and um, our local attorney, our township attorney helped me come up with my uh, talk and my speech. And um, yeah, it was pretty big. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I when I look that. back, I'm amazed that I did that. And <laughs> And it, that's pretty amazing. Okay, you have on here, I'm going to remind you because I, I want to point these out. Uh, growing and raising five amazing humans. Can you tell me out of your five, can you just tell me just really quick, what does each one of your five children do? Uh, son number one is a, a designer. He does computer design. Um, daughter, my only daughter, it has a teaching degree, but she's a she works with her husband in his business now, and she's so a stay-at-home mom, work from home. And then sons number three, four, our uh, children, child number three, four, and five are all attorneys. And I have one son-in-law that's an attorney. So, yep. I just want to point amazing. that out that out of five children, usually there's one or two in the bag that are not necessarily that uh, experienced and, and that well educated. And she has three out of five children are attorneys. Like, I don't know what kind of humans you raised or if they were superhumans before they came out of your belly, but I would say that took some pretty good parenting. And one of her other uh, proudest accomplishments is being married 51 years. That's right. Yeah, 51 years. All of these things, Mary, you down, you downplay or don't speak about enough. And I think that you could probably create a pretty big following based on some of the things that you've accomplished, because I know that new moms out there that are building families right now sure would love to know how to stay married to their partner happily for 51 years and raise five children that all become very successful. Okay. I, I would think that you have a lot out there to give young moms that want to go down that same path and have a very successful family life. No one gets married and has children in this world without having the goal of having a successful 50 year marriage and five successful children. Everyone has that goal. Everyone would love to know what Mary Clark did in those 51 years to create such an incredible life for her, her husband and her, her children to become the successful humans that they are. So if we just capitalized on that and took in some of the other things that you are really good at and very passionate about and shared those things, 
I think we have a brand that we can go and absolutely explode. And so we're not talking about, and then I'll move on because I'm going to go over this morning. So if you can stay with us, stay with us. If you can't, um, that's okay too. We're going to keep going because I've got Jen after this too. Um, I want I, I want people to understand that all of the things that you are really good at and things that you can share with people uh, that will that will attract people to you doesn't necessarily have to be about the actual product, service, or opportunity that you sell to make money. What we need to do is bridge the gap between what we are good at and how we can attract people and why we attract them and bridge that gap into why people would want to do business with us, purchase from us, work on an opportunity with us. So what we're trying to do is bridge that gap. And I think that's where people get lost. I think people go, well, I'm really good at this, but I'm selling health and wellness. Nothing about my life has ever really spelled that out. So how do I bridge that gap? And that's what we're going to work on once we have these things down, because people buy you before they buy your products. We need to get the people attracted to you and figure out how we're going to intertwine these things. Does that make sense? But Mary needs to focus on what makes her such an incredible human, because that's what's going to get people to follow you, like you, know you, love you, trust you enough to then do business with you. So what we're trying to do is bridge the gap between what we're good at and where we're trying to go. And so doing this, filling out your superpower worksheet helps uncover some of those things, because maybe you need someone else to take a look inside your life and say, hey, I didn't even know that about you. Why aren't we telling that story more or that story more? And as we go through the superpowers list, I'm thinking that maybe Sydney will be able to help people uh, create a schedule for 2023 of topics they can go live on, topics they can do reels and TikToks on. Those are how you're going to attract people. Then once you have the following, they want to learn more about you because they want to do what you're doing and they want to follow you. But what do we get them attracted with? We got to get them attracted with things that make you unique and different and what makes you an extraordinary human, what makes you awesome and great. So Mary, thank you so much for sharing and being open to being on here. I'm, I'm much you're appreciated. Welcome. <laughs> Were you able to get access to your answers on here? No. Okay. I don't know if I switched that setting maybe after you filled it out. Well, I'm going to try okay. to figure out somehow how to get your answers back to you. It only dumps them into a spreadsheet for me, or I can look at them one by one, but there's no way to save your answers and then like email you a PDF of them. But I'm going to try to, maybe I'll just screenshot yeah, a bunch of it. That would be good. You that okay. Way. Thank you. Um, for everybody who fills it out now, I have the setting so that you should be able to request that you get an email copy of it yourself. Jen, were you able to get a copy of your answers to yourself? Okay. It's because I changed the setting after the fact, I think. Um, okay. So let's go into Jen. Um, now you have on here, Jen Bufa. Yes. Is that what you go by? Um, yeah, I guess I've never changed my last name on my Zoom on my phone. <laughs> but but Sydney wants to know if you changed your last name on your driver's license and passport. Um, so no, because I did when I branded myself, I branded myself as Jen Bufa. So um, this is one thing that it's interesting that you bring up is because um, do I rebrand myself with my husband's last name or do I brand myself just as my old brand Jen Bufa? So um, now that I have the power of leverage, I'm going to send you to Mary Clark, who's had a 51 year uh, happy marriage because <laughs> I've been divorced and remarried. While I think my second marriage is on the upswing, uh, your husband may not approve of my answer and I like him. <laughs> <laughs> There's my answer for you. I mean, on a branding scale, I think that uh, I'll I'll just be very transparent. You have a, you have a brand out there. You've definitely used your old last name, but I think that you're about to take a massive upward swing in what you're doing. So I think that if you're going to change it, now would be the time. But if you okay. like okay. it that way on social media, keep it that way on social media and change it. I said Sydney at, wanted to know because Sydney. Um, just uh, ran into some problems with being able to travel outside of the country with a passport because she never changed her last name and she's been married for a long time. 
<laughs> so just as a fair warning, <laughs> you might need to take care of that. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to ask you some questions so that we can um, get through there. I didn't get a chance to go to your sheet. So um, give me, I'm going to ask you some different questions than, than what I already ask. Give me your infinite list. Give me three or four things that you do well or things that come easy to you. Speaking to people, praying, cooking, slaying demons, living with all gas, no breaks, bringing people infinite joy. Ooh, <laughs> that's a really good list. And the one I want to focus on today is you have a natural gift on stage to speak. Um, I've not, I've, there's very few people that have, I would say that you didn't have a ton of experience getting up and speaking on stage at that point. And that's just a guess. Right? That was my first time speaking in front of a crowd. Okay. So years ago, maybe five, six years ago, I saw Jen get up and speak on a stage uh, with very little warning. And I, when, you know, when there's somebody who has a natural talent at something and you can spot it right away, that was one of those things. She had the entire audience captivated and ready to like, well, I don't know what she's having, but I'm having it and I'm following her. Cause I want to be a part of that. I'm not even sure what it is. And she left everyone in the room, including me feeling that way that day. And so I know it's something that she needs to, if she enjoys it, needs to focus on, um, and get her voice heard more. So I think the challenge is only going to be figuring out how we go from point A to point B, but you have a natural gift there that can absolutely take all those other qualities that you have and catapult them. So being live more, um, looking for some speaking engagements or opportunities, being in, interviewed on podcasts. I'll tell you one of the biggest things, this is just a tip for everybody. Speaking on other people's podcasts, they're like this gift that keeps on giving because mm -hmm. when somebody finds a podcast and they like it, they'll go back and they'll listen to a bunch of episodes I've only been interviewed maybe on like three different podcasts, but I'll tell you what, Simon Chan, MLM radio, I still get people who message me, inbox me and want to, to work with me based on podcasts I did for him two or three years ago. They are the gift that keeps on giving. So if you are ever asked to be on somebody's podcast, yes is the answer. And Jen, there is um, what well, we can get together after the fact. There are some groups that ask that question all the time, looking for people to interview on my podcast. People ask it all the time in these entrepreneur groups. You should be getting on every one of those lists that you can. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Proudest accomplishments. Being a good mom because all moms are not great or good. <laughs> Ooh, I think Mary should become your new friend. <laughs> um what fills you with passion? mother remember <laughs> hey she's the team mom i love it um I'm here what, for what fills you with passion jen like when you jump out of bed in the morning and i know listen i'm gonna i'm gonna take this one off of your table i know your family does everyone's family makes them jump out of bed in the morning <laughs> If you're like me, I wanted to smother my teenage son over the weekend. So sometimes he does not make me want to jump out of bed in the morning. Okay. Okay. I'm just letting you know that when they get to the teenage years, it changes. So let's go with something different other than your family. Okay. Well, I didn't have my family on this answer because that okay. just comes naturally to me. Um, so I kind of have a lot. Um, so I've kind of went through a really hard time in my life and um, I learned understanding gives more authority and teaching people their authority over the physical and spiritual realm and teaching people that like if the devil can't distract you or confuse you he'll make you tired so not like maximizing people's like what comes out of their mouth because it's so important because if you speak it it, it can literally change the trajectory of your life where God's taking you because you've inadvertently said that's not what you're worth. So um, I turbocharging people's beliefs, being an instrument of changing the trajectory of people's lives, um, the brain and how it operates. 
is a huge passion of mine and speaking in front of people. I don't know. I just, Jen needs a <laughs> podcast in 2023. Sydney, can you help her? <laughs> and I think that people don't understand, which said, I'm seriously, we're going to put a course together for 2023 for this. I don't think people, I think people think that creating a podcast is difficult and it will take all kinds of things. You got to have all kinds of equipment and you got to subscribe to all kinds of stuff. It is not, you can create a podcast so easy. And I think said we, you need to create a course on just that because it's so easy to create a podcast and get your voice out there and heard. So top of well, your the, devil, the devil doesn't want people who make hell nervous. So that's why it's important to have these tools for people like me, because you know, what is he doing right now? He's detract, distracting me and confusing me. He doesn't make me tired. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I love it. Ooh, I'm getting like goosebumps over this one because I know this is where you need to head. People need to hear your voice more. And I think that that's a platform that you could get started on super easy from at home, being the stay at home mom that you want to be and building a massive following because your voice is going to change people's lives. Absolutely. Um, what do your friends ask you for advice about the most? To be honest with you, this is hilarious to me because even sometimes I'm taken back of what they ask me because I'm like, um, but it's also, I feel like it's a test, right? It's a test in my obedience. Do I open my mouth and give unsolicited advice that the devil wants me to go? and give or am I supposed to go into my prayer closet and pray about it and then go and give advice so this question is hard for me because I feel like it's a test for me and what I should be what should be coming out of here <laughs> I love it I so so see this brand for Jen in 2023 that is absolutely incredible. I think it's going to check all the boxes of the boxes you've been trying to check yeah. for the last three, four years. Yeah. I'm ready. And it, it just needs to be put into a process and a system. Cause yes. I think that's the only thing that you are in a platform. I think that's the only thing you were lacking. You have all of the tools, you have all the guts, the meats, the potatoes, all the things mm -hmm. to put in it. You've got all the brain power. You just needed a system, a platform and a, a strategy of how to get your mouth, your brain, your, your, your human qualities out to more people. And you're going to create a massive following. I just know it. I'm excited. Um, what would you do? This is the last question I'll act, ask, because I think we've really honed in on what we should be working <laughs> on with you for 2023. Um, what would you do if money didn't matter? I would tithe endlessly because tithing gives great provision in the kingdom and it unlocks more keys to the kingdom and I don't want my keys handed to me I want to earn my keys so I can go and teach other people how to unlock more keys in the kingdom I, see <laughs> and I, this. Travel. I, I know that Joey is on here and he cannot talk right now but <laughs> Joey and Jen I have you met yet no okay I see big <laughs> things happening here <laughs> Um, I, I'm so excited not tithing, go tithe because listen, if there's keys in your stock, you will go from stock to unstoppable. Go tithe. <laughs> I like it. Um, I think that Joey has, I wish I, we need to get, I need to get him on one of these hot seats and just spend 30 minutes with him. Um, and I know he can't talk this morning, but hopefully he's listening. Um, I know what his dream and goal is to create. And Jen, uh, I think that we need to somehow connect the two of you <laughs> on, on both of what, both of the things that you're, you're both trying to do. Cause I think there's some synergy there. Okay. I hope we are finding this useful. I like getting other people on here so that you can hear from what other people are looking to accomplish so that you guys, you yourselves can go out and fill out that form. It will teach you a lot about yourself. It's not me that wants to see your answer. I do get the answer. So if we wanted to schedule some one-on-one -on -one time to go through them, we can, but I just want you to dig deep about you 
And then yes, it will email you your answer so that you can keep them. And you should continue adding to that, that list. And let's really hone in on what you want to work on as a human in 2023 so that we can take all the other things we're going to teach you and we implement it based on that those few things so that you stay very focused on what you're trying to do and who you're trying to attract. There's going to be some things in January where we write out our purpose statement, our brand statement, and our um, and what fuels us so that we are going after we are not all over the place doing a hundred different things. We know exactly who we're trying to help. We know exactly how we're going to help them. We know exactly why it fills us with passion. We, ex we know exactly what the purpose is so that the end user, the customer, the person following us knows without a question where you're trying to head and that if they follow you, they're going to go in that X, Y, Z direction. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I don't think that we'll do any more hot seats on this topic, but if you're struggling with this and you need some more help, please just reach out. I hope that you guys will all get down what those superpowers are so that we know what we can go and work with in 2023. And I'm probably going to post this again in our extreme entre entrepreneurship page, because I want you guys to respond in there. Because if I don't know what you've picked as your superpowers, and I don't know what you're focusing on, it's so much harder for me to help you. Or look, look at Mary. I know what we're going to go in the direction with her. Now I know when people like Jen come to me and say, I want to be the best mom I can be. I'm send them people to Mary. You need to join Mary's group. This is what she does. And I'm not saying that's what Mary decides on, but if I know what you're doing, if I know what you're focusing on, I can send more people in your direction. If there's one thing I am really good at, it is connecting the right people for the right reason so that everybody wins. Cause I am not going to be the answer to what everybody needs. So if I can connect them to the human expert in that category, because of their experience, you're going to end up with somebody following you because of that. So I need to know what all y'all are working on so I can help you and we can send people in that direction for you. I send everybody with social media questions about tools to Sydney. Why wouldn't I? If I got, if I got a middle-aged mom who's been working a corporate career for years and years and years and is getting ready to retire, but she knows she wants more, guess where I'm sending them now? Right over to Jill Pacladinas because that's what she's going to help them with. Right. If I know those things, then I can help you guys build your businesses. And we're going to keep attracting and attracting and attracting. And we're going to build this Zoom to 100 people in 2023 so that we can continue to go out there and help more people find their purpose, their passion, and what they want to build business on and explode it. So we're not running in 100 different directions. Okay. I hope you guys have a fabulous week. Christmas is coming up. Christmas is in the air. I woke up this morning and put on my TV, all Christmas music. Cause I was like, this girl needs to get in the Christmas spirit this year. I'll have to tell on myself really quick. I put my Christmas tree up before Thanksgiving. It's still not decorated. So that is on my to-do list today before people start coming over to my house and seeing that I haven't done it yet. <laughs> you guys have a great week.